In this week, I'm building a charting software for my algo trading framework. Welcome back to my series From Zero to Algo Trader, a series in which I develop my own backtesting and algo trading framework. In the last episode, I designed and built a database for financial data. And now I want to bring this to life. So I'm building a charting software to be able to visualize candlestick data, indicators and the strategies. There are many different charting softwares out there. One which is very popular and which I also mentioned many times in my videos is TradingView. But TradingView is not very attractive for algo traders. Apart from the free tier, which is restrictive in many ways, it is not really cheap. And it's also by far not the most powerful software out there. I mean, I used it for multiple years to code my strategy backtests. But you can quickly reach the limits of the programming language PineScript. If you want to backtest a portfolio of multiple symbols or just placing a trade using pure PineScript, it's just not possible. But TradingView has one major selling point in my opinion and that is a good designed user interface. The clean and modern looking website where you can add great looking indicators and how seamlessly you can zoom in and out of charts just as seamlessly as you could scroll down and like the video. And that's exactly what I want for my algo trading framework. I don't want to plot my charts and indicators as static images. I want to have some nicely designed plots that are dynamically where I can zoom in and out, hover over them to see more detailed information to confirm my code. And how do I want to achieve this? Rebuilding a multi-billion dollar company as a solo developer might not sound too clever. But I don't have to. TradingView offers a free and open source library called Lightweight Charts to build charts like the original TradingView charts. So here's the plan. I program a web server that can query my database to access all the historical data and everything else that is needed. And on the other hand, it hosts the front end. The front end can then make requests to the web server and visualize the received data with lightweight charts. So let's get started coding. That's already looking pretty decent. Right now I have hard-coded symbol that's being requested. So let's add another query to request all the available markets of my database. With an additional drop-down menu, I should then be able to select a particular market and retrieve the historical data for it. Now I can easily switch between the markets and the chart is loading in just a second. But something very important is still missing. I only have one minute data in my database. That means I only can get this one minute data. I was planning to implement a function that combines several one minute candles to a higher time frame anyway. So this is also required for my backtesting framework, which will be written in Python. If I'm able to merge the candles by using an SQL query, I don't have to write the function twice and instead just reuse it. And another benefit of this is that the calculation in SQL should be much faster than in Python or in JavaScript. So I'm now trying to write such a SQL query with a bit of help of ChatGPT. I think this is working. I can now request a specific time frame from the front end. The server fetches the SQL query and returns the merge candlestick data to the front end, which then displays it as a lightweight chart. I have also added a legend to display the open, high, low and close values of the current Harvard candle. Let's compare my chart to the original TradingView chart. And I think this looks great. The candles look identical and also the prices look correct. Having such a nice looking front end is great, but this alone will not prove that a strategy is profitable. Watch the next episode where I start building my own backtesting framework. <laughs> 